This video is an introduction to our coverage of stocks. In this video, I'm going to introduce the broad types of stocks, and then in class, we're going to talk about a lot of the events that often occur in the lifetime of a stock. Now, we often classify stocks based upon the total market value of their shares. Stocks with large market capitalizations are referred to as large cap stocks. These are often defined as stocks with market caps over $10 billion. The S&P 500 is comprised of 500 large cap stocks. Most of the total market cap for publicly traded stocks is comprised of these stocks. Mid cap stocks are stocks with market capitalizations of about $2 billion to $10 billion, though the minimum and maximum sizes vary a bit depending on who you ask. These stocks are often not the leaders in their respective industries and they have some room to grow. Because these firms are often more diversified than small cap stocks, they exhibit less return volatility. Finally, small cap stocks are publicly traded stocks with market caps of about $2 billion or less. They often exhibit low liquidity and high return volatility. These stocks historically have outperformed large cap and mid cap stocks over the last 90 years. The next type of stocks you should be familiar with are speculative stocks. These are stocks that offer the opportunity for large returns but have underperformed historically. Speculative stocks often represent firms that are close to bankruptcy. Speculative stocks like JCPenney, Macy's, and SiriusXM represent firms that have had operational or financial concerns and have severely depressed share prices. Sometimes, these stocks will receive a piece of good news that investors use to update their expectations about the stock's viability. When this happens, the stock will see very large returns. Speculative stocks can perform very well during bull markets. However, during bear markets or recessions, the firms they represent are often the very first to enter bankruptcy. We also have tech stocks. I think everyone is familiar with tech stocks. These are just stocks of firms in the technology sector. Tech stocks can also be speculative stocks or large cap stocks or have any other classification I've already mentioned. Most of these stocks in the US that are publicly traded will be listed on the NASDAQ. Because the cash flows of these stocks are very volatile, these stocks often see large return volatility. Some of the largest tech stocks in the US are Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google. Together, these five stocks are known as the FANG stocks. It's just an acronym, F-A-A-N-G. Next, we have cyclical stocks. These stocks are issued by firms whose earnings are heavily dependent on the state of the economy. When economic conditions are good and the economy is in an expansionary period of the business cycle, cyclical stocks offer high returns. However, during contractionary periods in the business cycle, these stocks offer very low returns. For example, I bought my home from Lennar, which is a real estate development firm. During periods when unemployment is low and people have disposable income, home builders like Lennar sell a lot more homes. However, during recessions, fewer families have disposable income and Lennar and its competitors see very, very low returns. Industrial equipment manufacturers and mining firms are often also considered cyclical stocks. One final point to consider is that because these stocks have high returns when market conditions are good, and vice versa when conditions are poor, the beta of these firms is often greater than one. If you're looking for one statistic to define cyclical stocks, you can look at whether the firm's beta is high. Defensive stocks are stocks that tend to hold their value and even do well when the economy starts to falter. As such, they're somewhat the opposite of cyclical stocks. Most well-known defensive stocks are often utility providers and grocery stores like Walmart. During recessions, people still need electricity and groceries, so these stocks outperform other stocks during these periods. Defensive stocks often have betas of less than one. Next, we have income stocks. Income stocks are stocks that pay investors dividends. These stocks are often held by older investors that are more likely to need a stream of income. Ford Motor Company is one of the most prominent income stocks since it's regularly paid a dividend over the majority of its life. General Electric is another income stock. The firm is famous for keeping its dividend through several decades. Income stocks are often firms that are industry leaders or operate in high profit margin industries. Many of these companies are blue chip stocks as well. So what is a blue chip stock? Well, a blue chip stock is a stock issued by a large, well-established firm with a long track record of earning profits and paying dividends. 
The firms we think of when we think of blue chip stocks are typically listed on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Firms like Coca-Cola, McDonald's, and Apple are all leaders in the respective industry. Finally, we have a very important dichotomy to discuss, that of growth stocks and value stocks. Let's start with growth stocks. These are stocks of firms that have high market book ratios. Firms like Amazon, Netflix, and other tech stocks that investors believe will have high cash flow growth rates are good examples of growth stocks. The market price per share of these firms is high relative to the price per share of the firm on the balance sheet. Because these firms are growing rapidly, they often need to reinvest cash they earn, and thus these firms often don't pay any dividends. Next, we have value stocks. These are stocks of firms that have low market price per share on an exchange divided by book price per share on their balance sheet. They're called value stocks because the historical value of their stock, aka the book value per share, is high relative to the current market price per share. You've probably heard of value investors. Well, value investors are investors that invest in firms that are undervalued or relatively lowly valued. Purchasing shares of stocks with low market-to-book ratios is one of the primary investment strategies of value investors. Often, investors like Warren Buffett will invest in firms with low market-to-book ratios like railroad companies or utilities because these firms are still profitable and have been valued lower than they should have been by the market. And so with that, I'm going to wrap up, and in class we're going to actually start to look at some of the events that occur in the life cycle of a firm. So thank you very much, and if you have any questions, please send me an email or contact me during class. Thank you.